righty, good to see everybody here tonight. Welcome to the midweek service. Take a songbook. Let's start by singing together. We're going to sing what she's been playing, Onward Christian Soldiers. It's 429 in your hymn book, 429. Let's all stand together to sing it. Brother Bob will lead us. Onward Christian soldiers Marching as to war With the cross of Jesus tired you sang tired right there all right you sang onward christian soldiers you didn't have a lot of oomph in it okay uh it was onward christian soldiers marching as to war you didn't seem like your heart was really in it should we march around the auditorium when we sing it maybe that would help everybody hop 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 well, I hope you'll wake up tonight and uh, feel invigorated and refreshed and uh, glad you came to church, all right? And uh, you're in the right place. Even if you are tired, it's uh, good to be in church on Wednesday night. And uh, thanks for making the effort and being here. I pray it'll be just what uh, the Lord will give you, just what you need tonight, okay? Let's bow for prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for, again, the opportunity to be here in the middle of the week. And Father, I do thank you for each one who's made the effort to, to say it's Wednesday and uh, though maybe they had a rough day at work or it's been a long week even though it's been three days and they just said I'm going to go to church anyway and Lord I pray you'll give them what they need tonight make this service uh, you know the needs of our heart and Lord you know what we need even better than what we we think we know we need and so God I pray you'll direct the service and guide in the service and uh, Lord may you be pleased with the service tonight and Lord help us uh, to focus and to sing the songs that we have before us and to fellowship and then to, to, to concentrate and to focus on your word as we study it together tonight. And Lord, I pray that we can leave in a little bit saying, I sure was glad I came to church this evening. And so Lord, make it that kind of a service for us tonight. I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. 150 in your hymnal, 150, I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today, he lives, 150, on that first together, I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today, I know that he is living, whatever men may say, I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ
Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to import. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing shall come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to come and read the missionary letter and uh, this is a missionary letter from the Inmans uh, who are missionaries in Thailand and uh, I thought we'd start getting acquainted with maybe some recent prayer letters and we'll try to get one from the different missionaries and we're reading those leading up to the conference okay so this is the Inmans who've been missionaries in Thailand okay brother Neil thank you lots of miles and smiles dear churches and families July has marked a busy month with many wonderful meetings across several states. It is a blessing to remember late last year, starting to call pastors and seeing how an empty calendar at that time eventually become full through you and God's providence. Thank you again for praying for us as our support has risen to exceed the 25% mark. Pastor Bob Hooker is now the pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee. The Lord has placed him in a fantastic church, and we had a lot of enjoyment meeting the folks and presenting the Thailand's ministry there. Brother Hooker was our dating counselor and a great encourager in Bible College. On the 4th of July weekend, we had a blessed visit to, to Pastor John Waterhouse in Crestline, Ohio. Here we attended a special patriotic service and sensed the members' desire to further spread the gospel. We received many blessings in Missouri, where everyone was also very generous, asked many good questions, and encouraged us greatly. My kids were able to experience Silver Dollar City and horseback riding through churches and friends. We visited excellent churches in Missouri, where strong attendance, spirit, and vibrancy were born. We were able to repair Fred, our van, with free housing during our time. All of this was thanks to very godly giving people who loved the Lord. Thank you and him. We attended the FBMI candidate school, which helped us exponentially. Proven advice, encouragement, and seminars for deputation, the field, and more make us thankful for an organized and supportive missions agency. During our time in Hammond, we attended a youth conference visited our pastor John Wilkerson and drove to Greenwood, which is in Indiana, to visit Pastor Todd 
pointer. I love to hear another youth preacher started small and the Lord raised up a solid multifaceted ministry. Later in the month, we visited Pastor Todd Painter in Lincoln, Nebraska. Nebraska. I'll get that out. We enjoyed this multicultural church with many Burmese and Karen people, K-A-R-E-N. Sarah and I both had the joy of leading Karen people to the Lord. Ngumu came to church, gave a profession of faith, came again the following week, and plans on bringing his wife next week. As with so many churches, God is blessing his church through the labor and desire to reach the nearby people to downtown Lincoln. We thank every one of you for pulling for us. May the Lord bless your August. Grateful to serve Chad Edmund and family. Uh, that's good. What, what surprised me about that was the Burmese and the Karen. I've not heard that term before. K uh, Karen, like the lady's name, people in, in Lincoln, Nebraska, in the middle of our country and the, 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 how multicultural church was there. Um, you know, we, we go into all the world and try to preach the gospel to every creature, but we have to realize that in America, every creature has come to us. Uh, they're here, and we need to look for those opportunities to give the gospel to them right here, amen? And uh, don't, don't think that, well, I sent somebody over there to reach them. Uh, when God sends, some to us, some sends them to us right here, then we need to reach them right here. There's a reason they're here, amen? And uh, they didn't just, America is not just the land of opportunity that way. It ought to be the opportunity to hear the gospel when they come to America, and uh, that's our responsibility, all right? Uh, good letter. Well, take your prayer guide out, will you please? And uh, we'll start with our coming events, and um, of course, we'll be down at RU Inside, uh, down at the prison tomorrow night, and then Friday night, our fifth anniversary of Reformers Unanimous, and uh, that's going to be a great, great night. Uh, Pastor Scott Cowling, who is on staff at First Baptist Church of Bridgeport, uh, Michigan, and a uh, great church there. And uh, they were, I, I, I don't know who the first church was after Rockford to start Reformers Unanimous, but they were one of the first. Uh, been going a long time. Got a great chapter there. And uh, Brother Cowling is, uh, is just, he's an exciting guy. You're going you're gonna to enjoy him. Uh, we want as many of you that can come, come, come out. Uh, just check it out. Be here Friday night for our you and see what goes on and just uh, be part of the celebration uh, as we, we celebrate five years of uh, God being good to us and allowing us to have uh, the RU program here. All right. That's Friday night, seven o'clock sharp. OK, we'll introduce him to start off. Usually we have a video that go that does the principal. But he'll do that live himself uh, with the first principle. So he'll be kicking it off. So uh, be here a little bit early, and uh, let's let's have a good crowd here Friday night, all right? And I'd uh, love to have you here. Saturday morning, back out to London uh, Prison for the RU Inside there. And then, uh, of course, soul winning and bus visitation at 10 o'clock here, and we meet in the conference room. And then Monday night, ladies, uh, you'll have your ladies' night out. You're going to go bowling, all right? And uh, I think... I'm pretty sure it's seven fifty, seven dollars fifty cents. Now, one time change. Meet here at six fifteen. All right, six fifteen at the church. Have your time for your short devotional, and then get the alley. That's for two hours of bowling. It includes your shoes. Okay, and uh, if you're going to eat, you're going to pay for that. But uh, if uh, th that's the deal that they got, and um, I I was surprised that uh, bowling used to be pretty inexpensive activity but not so much anymore and uh that's rather expensive so uh she got a good deal for that and uh ladies you'll have a great time i know you always do and uh so plan on bowling night out on monday night okay there, there'll be a sign up sheet downstairs and sign up so you can kind of i think by sunday afternoon or sunday evening she's supposed to call them and kind of give them an idea about how many ladies to expect okay so if you get signed up by then that would be great Okay, a week from tonight, we'll have the Fry family, and uh, they are missionaries to a restricted country, and so uh, we'll look forward to having them in and uh, hearing from them next Wednesday night, all right? Keep praying for the missions conference coming up September 15 through 18. 
And of course, inside on the praise reports, we uh, praise the Lord for Cedric and uh, his profession of faith and baptism. And uh, he's uh, got a, got himself a job this week and uh, working. So uh, we praise the Lord for that. Diane Stiltner is home from the hospital, but continue to pray for Diane and for her healing. Okay, still still needs our prayers and uh, appreciate you lifting her up in prayer. We had 24 at CRC last Thursday with 11 brand new guys, and there were six men that received Christ as their Savior. And then 20 were at London on Saturday morning with two new men and three that received Christ as their Savior. So Lord's continuing to use the our U program there in the prisons. Uh, good to see Cheryl Poltlabel here tonight, and I've uh, been praying for her with her pneumonia and such so that Glad she's feeling well enough to be in church this evening. Pray for Sandra, uh, Sandy Logan. Uh, she's under the weather tonight, and uh, she's got some antibiotic from her doctor. It's either cold, sinus, or something like that, but it's respiratory. So uh, please keep her in your prayers uh, as well uh, this evening, all right? And the other th others on the health list there, remember those, if you would. And then, of course, we pray for these who are in authority, and then... Uh, those in our military and of course these battling cancer and then these on the salvation list and uh, the unreached people groups of the world we continue to pray that God will raise up laborers to go to them and then our missionaries which tonight was the Inman uh, family who will be coming to us uh, here for the missions conference I didn't mention in the coming events is don't forget Saturday morning at 10 a.m. is the service for Marion Skinner uh, right here at the church okay um the, those of you who signed up to bring things in, uh, uh, probably probably Saturday morning is the best time to bring that uh, because of all the things going on Friday night with are you here and the celebration and everything. If you bring it in too early, it'll all get mixed in and it's hard to keep it separated. So if you could bring it by, my wife will be here by 8 or so on Saturday morning. So if you can bring it by anytime Saturday morning, that'd be great. Okay, and thank you to all those who took care of the chicken and uh, the other ones talking about the green beans and the pies and the desserts and things like that. Okay, and ladies who are helping, I think you're supposed to be here about 8.30 anyway. All right, and uh, appreciate you doing that and pray for Susan. Uh, they are in route now. Uh, due to land, I think, in D.C. sometime this evening, and then her and her daughter will be driving in tomorrow uh, to, to Grove City, okay? And uh, appreciate your prayers for them and for the family. All right. Well, let's take a minute, and uh, we'll go to prayer. I'm going to have Brother Wallace come up and lead us in our prayer tonight, if he would. And uh, as he prays audibly, pray along with him silently, if you would. Uh, unite your heart together with his, and uh, we'll pray together, all right? Let's bow. Brother Bob. Let us pray. Father, thank you again for being such a great God. And Lord, as we uh, start this prayer off, I do want to recognize that the evil one is about and that, Lord, I'm to rebuke him in the name of Jesus, that he's not allowed anywhere in this, around this place tonight. So, Lord, I rebuke him now. And, Lord, I, I do that because we know that he's out there and he's trying to uh, dim the hearing and dim the eyes of those who are trying to receive the word, your word. And Lord, uh, uh, the Bible often states about uh, people who see, seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear. And Lord, there's so many things out there that can attract our attention. So Lord, I would pray that uh, everyone here tonight would, would wholly give theirself to the, the preaching of God's word as your man opens up. Uh, your word, and Lord, uh, he studied, and, and Lord, uh, may this be a profitable time in the, in the ears of the hearers, and Lord, that uh, it would help us to grow and mature, and Lord, uh, uh, because uh, the time that it takes to study and prepare and, and search out your heart as he teaches, Lord, we do not want this to be a wasteful time, so Lord, we uh, help us to yield our members to you. Uh, as uh, before he comes tonight and Lord may all of us uh, cry out to you for strength to uh, listen very close to what's going to be taught tonight uh, Lord uh, I pray for uh, the uh, missionaries and uh, Lord especially the Edmonds who are going to be here at our missions conference and uh, Lord I do pray for the missions conference coming up that 
Lord, it will be a fruitful time for all. Lord, uh, people should be uh, advertising that uh, this is a special time for our church. Uh, they've never been to a missions conference like it's held at Bible Baptist Church. And Lord, I just uh, uh, want to uh, encourage people to invite people to uh, come and, and be a part of that time. Uh, Father, I do pray for these unreached people groups. And uh, Lord, because of our uh, unlearned uh, we are in many uh, languages and stuff, there's... These nations may be hard to pronounce. These languages may be hard to pronounce. But, Father, uh, you know as we attempt to uh, uh, bring them up to you, just like we attempt sometimes to read the Old Testament and some of the names that were in the Old Testament that, uh, Father, uh, that are hard to pronounce. And, and Lord, but uh, you know our heart. And you know when we lift these people up to you, we're depending on you. We're walking by faith, Lord, that... Uh, you're going to open up the doors and give us the, the uh, wherewithal to go and spread the gospel around the world. Uh, Lord, you're the one that said that the field is already uh, white to harvest. And if it was white back then, Lord, it, it uh, must be so much greater today. And Lord, we need your help as we go forth and as we do things like uh, in our uh, uh, parade and we pass out to John and Romans. And Father, the things that, uh, the, the word that is going to reach people's hands that we know not, but Lord, you know. And, and Lord, we expect to hear great things from that, from that effort. From, and we expect to, to see great fruit from that because uh, it's all about you. Uh, Father, as uh, we uh, come to uh, approach the uh, time of we lift these people up to you, Father, I pray for... Uh, uh, Sister Callahan, as they are traveling for their safety, and uh, Lord, I, I pray for the, the uh, going home celebration that's going to be held here Saturday, and, and Lord, uh, Mrs. Skinner is far better off uh, one day in heaven than the whole many years that she spent here on earth. And Lord, just being one day with you, our minds can't even imagine that, but Lord, we're all going to look forward to that one day. And uh, Father, we, uh, that's our great hope, uh, that uh, one day we'll be with you and we'll be with her. And Father, I pray for uh, uh, Diane Stiltner. I pray that you'll continue to heal her. Father, And uh, this is a, a process of uh, long healing. And uh, Lord, that uh, seems like, uh, um, Lord, it's just one, one setback and then three steps forward and then another setback. But Lord... Help her to keep the faith. Help her to realize that you're still in charge, that you're a great God, and you're a miracle-working God. And that, Lord, uh, as long as we have that faith and we walk by faith, that, Lord, nothing can stop that faith. I believe that with all my heart. And, Lord, I just pray that you would uh, strengthen her heart as she uh, continues to recover. And, Lord, uh, may uh, people send cards and, and things of encouragement to her. And, Lord, just lift her up before your throne every day. Lord, I pray for uh, uh, the uh, RU uh, program here that is held at London and, and uh, CRC. And, and, Father, I just, uh, you just can't put it into words. The weeks that we, each week that we see the uh, uh, men come and, and the uh, earnest look on their face of, of how they want to uh, change their life. They want, uh, they want a new way. They want that hope. And Lord, as we encourage them, Lord, I pray you'll continue to work in their hearts. Just, uh, Lord, we've seen evidence of that. And uh, Lord, I just uh, pray that it will continue and we'll have time to uh, give them more of your word. And Lord, uh, have see more uh, testimonies come before this pulpit of uh, how you have changed their hearts. And Father, as uh, we uh, pray for the ones who are on our health list, Lord, I do want to thank you for uh, Mrs. Polabel and her recovery and how she's uh, uh, back in church tonight where I believe uh, with all my heart that's where she wants to be. And Lord, uh, I just pray that you'll continue to work in our hearts. Lord, I pray that you would uh, uh, protect us during the cold season and Lord we got uh, 
all this uh, uh, cantata and stuff like that coming up, and it seems like flu is abounding, and there's new things you hear every day that is uh, going around. Lord, protect our church. Put a, uh, a protective guard around us so that we can uh, uh, be safe and be healthy, and, and Lord, serve you with, uh, uh, with a good health. And Lord, uh, help us to do it joyfully. Uh, Father, as our pastor comes and open up your word, I pray again, Lord, that uh, people will be attentive to what he's going to teach. And uh, Lord, uh, help us all to grow. Help us all to retain some of what you would have us to retain, that we could use it uh, in the coming days to uh, glorify you. Lord, I love you. Thank you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. 75, if you would turn with me, please. Number 75 in the suite, by and by. Let's all stand together as we sing. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way. To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing the last stanza together. We shall sing on that beautiful shore The melodious songs of the blessed And our spirits shall sorrow no more 
Not a sigh for the blessing of rest In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore On the last to our bountiful Father above we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by shall meet on that beautiful shore. All right, go ahead and be seated if you will. Um, after the service, we need some men that can, um, the lattice work that was around the fellowship hall, that's all been disconnected and it needs to, they're in uh, four by eight sections. We need to go out to the semi-trailer out there and then it needs to go to the front of the trailer, okay? We have some fellows who can handle that after the service. Uh, maybe somebody up in the truck to, you know, get them up there and just guys to take it out there. Anybody who can do that after service. Brother Chuck can do it. Brother Paxton will do that. James Beach, good. All right. And David will volunteer. Okay, good. That's perfect. You guys will do that. And uh, so one of you decide who jumps in the truck and uh, if you'll care for that. Um, in the coming weeks, between now and missions conference, there may be times that uh, things may look a little bit like they're under construction, okay? Uh, painting, some painting's gonna be getting done, and uh, so sometimes some will look, something may look good, something may not look so good, might be right in the middle of something. Uh, when it comes to carpeting, we're not sure. We may, we may have one midweek service where we have to meet out in the fellowship hall while they get this carpeted. Uh, we just kind of see how that goes, but uh, we'll just kind of we'll we'll be flexible, and uh, we'll we'll go with it. And uh, but it's uh, some things will be happening over the next few weeks. Okay, so just a heads up uh, in that regard. All right, let's pray. Ask God's blessing on our offering tonight. All right, Father, thank you for the privilege to give, and Lord, thank you for the faithfulness of your people in this place, and they're faithful in giving. Uh, Lord, thank you for their love for you. And, Lord, we know that where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. And I want to thank you, Lord, for people who love their church and uh, love the work that you're doing in our church. I pray you'll bless our offering tonight, Lord, and use it for the furtherance of the gospel at Bible Baptist Church. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. All right, take your Bible this evening if you would. I want you to go to Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28, please. Genesis 28. Notice with me, if you will, verse number 10. And Jacob went 
out from Beersheba and went toward Herod. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And to thy seed and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee. And I and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid, and said, How dreadful is this place! This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here tonight. And as we uh, look at this passage and others dealing with Jacob's life, I, I pray you'll help us to glean tonight uh, what you would have us to glean from the scriptures. And Lord, I pray that you would minister to each one of our hearts. Help us to have the leadership of the Holy Spirit, both as I bring the Bible study and as each individual listens to your word tonight. May the word of God accomplish what you desire it to accomplish in each one of our hearts this evening. Help us, encourage us, and challenge us. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to you tonight about four goals for every Christian Four goals for every Christian. And we're going to get this from the life of Jacob. Jacob's, Jacob's an amazing man in the Bible. Uh, and one that I think we all can easily relate to. And I think we relate to him because there's times you, you love him and there's times you hate him. Or, or you can't understand what, what, have you do, what, what are you doing? And, and kind of like you are with yourself, you know. Uh, there's times you're on course and you say, man, I got this good. And other times... You look at yourself and say, what did you do that for? Uh, what did you say that for? And that's the way it is with Jacob. There's times that uh, he's godly, and there's times that he's just deceitful and evil. He just lives up to his names. Uh, the name Jacob meant supplanter or trickster. And he started early, didn't he? I mean, he even back when he tricked Esau out of the birthright uh, by making some soup for him. Uh, but then when he wrestled with God, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, he got a name changed, didn't he? And his name was changed to Israel. And as a prince, thou hast power with God. And it means prince of God or prince with God. And uh, that's, that's how it is. So it's almost like he had two natures. Almost like we have two natures. <laughs> the, the flesh and the spirit and the old man and the new man. And, and, and the battle that goes on, these two are contrary one to another. But when you go over to Hebrews 11, there's Jacob. He's there. Uh, he's in God's hall of faith. And so I think we can learn a lot from Jacob's life. And tonight we're just going to take four simple, simple goals. I think, by the way, let me say this. I think everybody ought to have goals. I think I'd have uh, something that you aim for each day. I, I know this. If you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Okay? So, so aim at something. Uh, you got to have Goal set. Um, how many of you are? How many of you, when you have a, when you get up in the day, how many of you make a list of what you want to get accomplished that day, and then you begin to cross things off to, to get it done? Yeah, a lot of people do that. 
That's, by the way, it helps you stay productive, helps you stay on task and not get off on other things. And plus, it just gives you, gives you an accomplishment. Now, wife, my wife is a, is a minute goal. She not only writes down what she does, she writes down how long it's going to take her to do it. Uh, and then she tries to beat the clock, you know, and get it done in less time than what she thinks. But, so she has it down to the minute of how long it's going to take her to do what she's going to do. And, uh, and, and she, I think she crams it all in, but she gets her all done. And uh, she's, a, she's a detailed planner, and uh, she likes to do that to, to get things accomplished that she knows needs to get done. And so I think, and it's interesting, some people are like that in life, but then when it comes to their Christian life, they don't set any goals. They just kind of, whatever happens, happens. You know, whatever, good, good, okay. And, and, and then we wonder why we don't get anywhere or why we don't make the progress that we ought to make. You have to set goals. Here's four goals that I think God would have every Christian to have, all right? Number one is to know God personally. To know God personally. You say, preacher, oh, isn't that happen when you get saved? No, it doesn't happen when you get saved. You get introduced to God when you get saved. You get introduced to Jesus when you get saved. But that doesn't mean you know Him. Okay? And, and there's, a, there's a difference. This is Jacob in, in chapter 28. Jacob's first time away from home. Uh, he has got the birthright away from Esau. In fact, he stole the blessing away from Esau. Remember, with mom's help, dressed himself up as a hairy guy, you know, put the... The, the goat's hair on him and such, and uh, uh, fooled his dad and, and got the blessing that was intended for Esau. And so then Esau utters the words, I'm going to kill you. Uh, uh, and Jacob got the idea that Esau meant it. And so he says, I'm going to get out of town. And so he would help his mom. He's on his journey. So now he's first time away from home, all by himself. And he, he lays down to sleep and he has a dream. And the dream is, he dreams there's a ladder going from earth right up to heaven. And uh, we know from the New Testament that ladder was a picture of Jesus Christ because he's the only way to go to heaven. Anybody that, anybody that climbs up some other way, John 10 says, is a thief and a robber. Okay? As on, he is the gate to heaven. He's the only way to get there. But here, notice what God tells him. Did you catch when we were reading it? The Lord said in verse 13, the Lord stood above it, that ladder, and he said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it into thy seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and the east and the north and the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. What's that sound like? That sounds like the same thing he said to Abraham. And it is the same thing he said to Isaac. And now he's saying the same thing to Jacob. He said, Jacob, it's time now that you know me personally. That you know my promise is personal to you. You may have lived off the faith of dad for a while. You may have lived off the faith of your grandpa for a while. But now I'm talking to you. This has to be personal with you. It's time for you to know God and not live off mom and dad anymore. Hey, teenagers in the room tonight, there's going to come a time in your life, and it ought to be a time in your life, when you realize you're not going to live off mom and dad anymore. You're going to need to know God. You're going to need to have a relationship with God. You're going to need to, to know what the Bible says. It breaks my heart when I, when I get phone calls from someone, a, a, a teenager, or someone who's 18, 19, 20 years old, grown up in church, and they're asking me questions that ought to be very, they, they ought to know by this time. I think, what, what were you doing for all those years in church? You know what you're doing? Living off everybody else's, what they think, what they said. And you never did read the Bible for yourself. You never did search it out for yourself. It's time you get to know God yourself. It's time you get to know God personally. That's a goal you ought to have. I don't just want to know about God. I want to know God. I want to know Him personally. And so it's time for you to get to know God Yourself. That the promises of God are not... Listen, Jacob, the promises of God are not just for Abraham. The promises of God are not just for Isaac and Rebekah. The promises of God are for you. And teenager, young person, the promises of God are for you. They're not just for, for mom and dad. They're not just for the old folk. Okay, 
They're for you, and they're for you to get a hold of and for you to know Him. It's time for you to begin to pray. It's time for you to begin to read and to study and to memorize and to meditate in the Bible. It's time for you to, to, to get to know who God is. And Jacob calls the name of the place in verse 19, he calls the name of that place Bethel. Bethel. It means the house of God. The house of God. That would, always, that would always be a special place in Jacob's life. You'll find that at several times he wants to get back to Bethel. Get back to the house of God. A place where he met God. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a place where you meet with God? Oh, to be sure, you can talk with God anywhere, anytime, any place. But I think there's something about having a place where you meet God. Let's look at a couple of scriptures. Hold your finger here in Genesis or put a piece of paper there because we'll come back to that. Why don't you go to the New Testament? Look at Mark chapter 1, will you please? Mark chapter 1. This is uh, in reference here to the Lord Jesus. Mark chapter 1. And by the way, the Lord Jesus, when He walked on this earth, He walked as our example. That we're to follow His steps. Okay? And so it says here, Mark, Mark chapter 1, and by the way, Mark 1 was an incredibly busy day for the Lord Jesus, okay? When you read Mark chapter 1, uh, find out there's a man with an unclean spirit, and well, first he calls his disciples, he meets a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit, he heals him and casts the spirit out, and then uh, he entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John, his, Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, he heals her, and then at even, when the sun was set, verse 32, they brought in him all that were diseased, <coughs> them that were possessed with devils. All the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, cast out devils, and suffered not the devil's feet because they knew him. I mean, he had a full day. People all the time. You ever had one of them days? Where you just were busy and talking to people and talking to people and every, all day long? And finally, nighttime comes, and listen, he goes to sleep. But it's well after the sun was set. These people, he had to deal with these people well into the night. But what's verse 35 say? And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Oh, I had, a, I had such a busy day yesterday, I think I need an extra half hour sleep. Jesus said, I think I need to get up an extra half hour early and go pray. Hmm? How different that is than what we are. Okay? He, he realized, well, wait a minute, he had a place. He had a solitary place that he went to, to pray. And by the way, you never do that, but that you influence other people. What's the next verse say? And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. He got up and went away to that solitary place, but there were some other fellows that followed him out there. And maybe they got the idea, this is what you should do every morning, is get alone in a solitary place with God. Okay. Now, I believe that was a habit of Jesus. Say, so why do you think that, preacher? Look at John chapter 18. John chapter 18, please. Jesus now is on going to the garden where Judas is going to come and betray him. And notice what the scripture says in John 18 verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. Now watch. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. Why did he know the place? For Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas, hey, Judas, we're going to betray him. Where do you think he is? I, I got a good idea where he is. I know the place where he goes. I know, I know the place where Jesus will go as he wants to pray, as he wants to be alone with God. And Judas knew that place. You see, God didn't save you just to keep you from going to hell. Now, in saving you, you won't go to hell. Praise God for that. 
But don't say, I'm saved, I'm not going to hell, that's all that matters. No, 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 that's not all that matters. He saved you that He might have a relationship with you. That you might be able to fellowship with Him. And if you're not fellowshipping with Him, if you're not getting to know Him, you're not fulfilling the purpose for which God saved you. How many people in the room are married? How many are married? Okay. Why'd you get married? So you can say, I'm married, that's all that matters. Is that true? No. You find out that's not true, is it? Why'd you get married? I think you got married because you decided, I want to be with them. Am I right? I, I believe you get married because you want to have a relationship with somebody. You didn't just want to visit them and have to leave and go to your own place. You wanted to stay together. You wanted to be with them. How, how's your marriage going to work if you never want to be with the one you're married to? How's that going to work? Yeah, going to be some problems. You wonder why your Christian life doesn't work so well? How much do you want to be with God? How much do you want to know Him personally? How much do you want to spend time with Him? You see, you were, you were, you, you made the, you, God saved you, and he, and he, and by the way, you're called the bride of Christ. So we are. We're in essence, spiritually, we're married to Him. How's the relationship going? How's the marriage? Are you getting close to each other? Getting to know Him? Don't settle to know about God and not know God. Don't settle for that. Don't settle for hearing about His presence and never experience His presence with you. Don't, don't settle for hearing answers to prayer and never have any of your own answers to prayer. Know God personally. That ought to be a goal of your life. That's why Paul wrote, that I may know Him. You mean Paul wasn't saved? No, 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 he was saved. But he wanted to know Him. An intimate knowledge of who God is. You ever feel that way? You ever feel like, man, I want to know God? I don't want to, I want to go through this life and go through my Christian life and not know God. I don't want to just live on what everybody else has told me about God. I want, to, I want to see God for myself. I want to see God do things for myself. I want to know Him. Have a passion to know God personally. Okay? Second goal. Go back to Genesis, please. Genesis. Most of you know he goes to hook up in a with a man named Laban, relative of his mother. And Laban has two daughters, Rachel and Leah. Okay? And Jacob immediately thinks he falls in love and certainly he likes the looks of Rachel. And so he makes a deal with Laban that he'll serve Laban for seven years for Rachel, his daughter. But that's love. I mean, if you dated your wife or courted your wife seven years before you got permission to marry her? I don't think anybody's hands up. That's a long time. Look at verse 20 of chapter 29. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love that he had to her. That's an amazing verse. Seven years seeming but like a few days because of the love he had for her. 
What's the second goal you ought to have? The second goal every Christian ought to have is that, that my service for God, my service would be motivated by love. Motivated by love for Him. Service is always easy when it's motivated by love. You take a, a, a lady who's worked since she's 16 years of age or even maybe before that and, and, and then maybe 24 or 25, you know, after nine years working or 10 years working, she ends up getting married and then maybe she works a few years and then pretty soon children start coming and, and then there's two children and then there's three children and then uh, she's taking care of three kids under five years old, you know, at home and, and uh, taking care of laundry and diapers and cleaning and feeding and, and taking care of the husband and all that. And she now, and people say, oh, you're not working anymore. <laughs> don't they? No, I'm just at home. And by the way, you don't consider it work. Why? Because you love those people you're doing it. When, when, when your service is motivated by love, not work. It's easy. It's, it's enjoyable. And it's because of your motivation. Now, now I'll tell you what, <laughs> Jacob got really tested on this because you know what happened. Some of you know the story. Got to be the wedding and, and those, not, not like, their weddings aren't like our weddings, Okay. You didn't get to see the bride even hardly. You know what I mean? She's all covered up and they uh, get married and you pronounce husband and wife and he goes into the honeymoon suite, you know, at night and uh, they're going to uh, consummate the marriage and he wakes up the next morning, the light comes on and it's not Rachel, it's Leah. Now Leah, the Bible is kind. It says she was tender-eyed. I don't know if that means it was hard to look at her or I don't know. She just wasn't very pretty as Rachel was. And, and he didn't have a desire for her, but he says, Hey, what are you doing, man? You tricked me. Oh, somebody's as tricky as he is, huh? He met his match in Laban. And Laban said, Hey, it's not the custom to give the younger before I give the older in marriage. So you got her. Now I'll still give you Rachel, but you got to serve another seven years. And guess what? He agreed. So now, how many years did he serve to get Rachel? Fourteen years. Amazing, amazing thing. Love. Love did it. It wasn't difficult for him because he was motivated by love. That's why, that's why it's the, when they came to Jesus... And they said, what's the greatest commandment of all? There's 600 and some. Tell us of those 600 and some commandments, well, what one do you think is the greatest of all? What did Jesus say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. The second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. He says you've got to love God. You've got to get that settled first. And when in 1 John 5, 1 John chapter 5, let me make sure I read it to you. You can look it up if you want. 1 John 5 verse 2. 1 John 5 verse 2 says, we, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not grievous. When it says His commandments are not grievous, it says they're not heavy. They're not burdensome. Okay? They're not, they're not oppressive. People who think, oh man, you got to do this, and i got to do that, and I can't do this, and I can't do that. Man, I just saw these. No, 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 no. You're revealing you don't have the right motive. The motivation behind it all is love. Do you really look at your husband or look at your wife and say, eh, I can't go out with other men anymore? Are you kidding me? Oh, you're so restrictive. Legalist. I should have freedom. Do as I want. No, 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 no. Why? You don't, listen, you don't go out with other men or go out with other women in a marriage. Why? Because you love the one 
that you're with. It's not because I can't, it's because I don't want to. See? It's not because I can't do this, I can't do that. You know what? I don't want to do those things if it doesn't please Him. I want to please Him. Why? Motivated by love. So the commandments are not grievous, not burdensome. I want to do what pleases God. I want, to, I want my service to be motivated by love. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 talks about the, the, what is referred to as the judgment seat of Christ. There's two judgments that are going to take place. The lost will be judged at what, what the Bible calls the great white throne judgment. That's in Revelation chapter 20. Saved people will not be in that judgment. I, I, I kind of think we're going to see it. I think we may witness it. You can disagree about that if you want, but I think we'll see it and it'll be, it'll be some heartbreak for us to see people cast into hell. And it's after that God will wipe away our tears. But, but, we're, that's the only way, but here, this judgment we're going to talk about is called the judgment seat of Christ. That's where we're going to stand before God. And the things we've done in this body, whether they're good or bad, we're going to give an account for. Read what it says in 1 Corinthians 3. Notice verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So there's only one foundation to build our life on, and that is Jesus Christ. Now, how are we building? What are we building on? Everybody here, if you're saved, you have the same foundation. What, what are you building with? Here's what you have to build with. If any man build upon the foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Okay? Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work. Now notice of what sort it is. If any man's work abide whereon he hath built, or built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So the works will be tested about what we build and why, why I think, of what sort it is. It's talking not about the quantity, but the quality. It's talking about why did we do what we do? I think it's talking about what was the motive behind it. Remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13? He said, though, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity. He says, I'm sounding brass and tingling cymbal. I'm nothing. Though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, I am. It profit me nothing. Yeah, not going to count anything. If I'm not motivated by love for Jesus Christ, it's going to burn up. It won't count. It won't mean anything. And that's why I think sometimes the Bible says the last will be first and the first will be last. We'll look at somebody with this great pile of work and say, wow, look at that. And God will say, light the match. <laughs> then go up and smoke. Hmm? What was that all about? He did it so he'd look good. He did it so everybody would talk about him. Didn't, he didn't do it out of love for me. Want my? I want. Uh, listen, you do it. You, whatever I do for the Lord, I want to do it because I love the Lord. That's it. I want to love Him with all my heart, not just the quantity, but the quality. It's going to be tested for what sort it is. I want to do the work of the ministry because I love Jesus Christ. You ought to teach Sunday school because you love Jesus Christ. Remember Hudson Taylor when they, he was recruiting people for the China Inland Mission years ago when, when China was open to the gospel and, and he was recruiting workers for the mission and they said, I guess, I guess you're looking for people to have a love for the Chinese people. He said, no. And they were somewhat taken aback. You mean they don't have to have a love for the Chinese people? No. He says, I'm looking for people to have a love for God. Because then they'll love the Chinese people. But they have to love God first. You ought to usher because you love Jesus Christ. 
You ought to sing in the choir because you love Jesus Christ. Play an instrument because you love Jesus Christ. Take your turn in the nursery because you love Jesus Christ. Clean the building because you love Jesus Christ. Tell someone else about Christ. Why? Because I love Jesus Christ. Everything we do is it motivated by love. I want to serve God lovingly. To be motivated by love. I think that's the only thing that's going to stand. So we have two goals so far. Number one, to know God personally. Number two, to serve God lovingly. Number three, to have the power of God. Go back to Genesis 32. To have the power of God. I, I put mightily, I think. To have the power of God mightily. You just have it easier to remember. Genesis 32 is a great, great account here of Jacob wrestling with the angel of God. In verse 24 it says, Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. He said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, what thy name? And he said, Wherefore is it thou dost ask of my name? And he blessed him there. Jacob called the name of that place Penuel. For I have seen God face to face, my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh and the sinew that shrank. Jacob wrestled, and that night he got four things. He, first of all, he got a blessing. I'm not letting you go to you bless me. He got a new name. He got his name changed from Jacob to Israel. He got an unnatural walk. He limped from that day forward. He never walked the same. And by the way, after you have an encounter with Jesus Christ, you never walk the same. You get an unnatural walk. In fact, you get a supernatural walk. And then he had a preservation. He said, my life is preserved. Are you willing to have the power of God? He got... He received power with God. He became a prince with God as you have power with God and with men. How did he get that? All night in prayer. Prevailed all night wrestling with God in prayer. I, I don't think he got sleepy. He was that fervent and that, that, that real in his wrestling with God. And he wasn't going to let go until he got the blessing. Until he knew the power of God. Isaiah 44 and verse 3, God says, I will pour water on him who is thirsty. And I'll pour floods upon the dry ground. Who's thirsty anymore for the power of God? Who's thirsty anymore for God's blessing to be upon their life? That they might have power with God and with men. Who has a thirst for that that they'll miss a night of sleep? Who has thirst for that that they'll miss uh, 24 hours worth of food to beg for God's power in their life? To beg for God, God to, to be real to them. Well, he got peace and for sure and, and, and he's called Israel a prince with God. Peace, peace is what he had inwardly but power is what people will see outwardly. The Bible never says we'll be conscious of our power. But it does say we can be conscious of the peace. We can know the peace that passes all understanding. And when you know the peace, others will see the power in your life. When the Bible says that we're to be filled with the Spirit, that means we're to be energized by the Spirit. 
And sometimes at face value, when you're just watching two people serve or work, sometimes you may not outwardly see it. Sometimes you will. But you sure will tell the difference in the results. You see the power of God. How is it that you, some people you feel, you watch them, they just talk to somebody and man, people listen to them. They give the gospel. People respond. You say, man, how do they do that? It's not them doing that. That's, that's God working through them. I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want to be energized by the Spirit. I don't want to I don't want to see what Stan Slaybaugh can do. I want to see what God can do. I want to know what, what can God do. I want His power, not my power. His strength, not my strength. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. And I, I say that not just from the words of a song. I can tell you that from experience. The arm of flesh will fail you. If I do it in my own power, that's when I get weary. If I do it in my own power, that's when I get discouraged. If I do it in my own power, that's when I get critical or I get frustrated. Because I'm doing it in my own. I want to live in His power. I want to live under His control. But listen, God doesn't give that cheaply. He's not going to give it to someone who's, 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 who's flippant about it. You've got to be serious about this. You've got to thirst for it. I'll pour waters on him that is thirsty. I want to have the power of God mightily in my life. That ought to be the goal of every believer. That's not just for the pastor or the missionary or the evangelist. That's for every Christian. When Paul wrote, be filled with the Spirit in Ephesians 5, that was to every believer. And by the way, the very right after those verses, the very first uh, place he addresses is what? Husbands and wives. Where's the, where's the very first place the fullness of the Spirit and you being energized by the Spirit and Him working through you. Where's the first place that's going to show up? At home. The first person ought to be to tell you whether Stan Slayball is yielded to the Spirit of God, whether he's energized by the Spirit of God, ought to be Mrs. Slayball. Because she lives with that guy. If your Christianity isn't any good at home, it isn't any good. It needs to be right at home. I want to know God personally. I want to serve God lovingly. I want to have the power of God mightily. And then Genesis 47. Genesis 47. Are you okay? We're just about done. Genesis 47. This is good. Not that the other hasn't been good, but this is really good. Genesis 47, now Joseph has been in Egypt. Now Jacob and all the guys have come down. They're living there now too. Joseph revealed himself to them. They know he's there. He's seen them. And in Genesis 47, verse number 28, Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the whole age of Jacob was 140 and 7 years. And the time drew nigh that Israel must die. And he called his son Joseph and said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt. But I will lie with my fathers, and thou shalt carry me out of Egypt, and bury me in their burying place. And he said, I will do as thou hast said. And he said, Swear unto me. And he swore unto him, and Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head. Now when you get into chapter 48, it told Joseph, your father's sick, and he took him his sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. They told Jacob that, and he's going to pronounce a blessing. Verse 5, it says, Now the two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee in Egypt, are mine. Has Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. 
and thy issue which thou, shalt, that thou begettest after them shall be thine, and they shall be called after the name of their brethren in inheritance. And then verse 7, let, I want to get to verse 8. Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Okay? Joseph said unto his father, These are my sons, whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God has showed me also thy seed. Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. Manasseh, because he's the firstborn, he has the right hand and to be the blessing. Ephraim would be the secondborn, he's got the left one. But notice what what Isaac de- or what uh, Jacob does. Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly. That means he knew what he was doing. For Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. And let my name be named on them in the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. And let them go in a multitude in the midst of the earth. When Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. But Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. And put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, And thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim, and as Manasseh. And he said Ephraim before Manasseh. So here's, here's Israel, here's Jacob, now called Israel, prince with God, and he's being faithful unto death. Faithful unto death. And I put the word happily after it. I want to be faithful unto death, and I want to be happy about doing it. I don't want to become a grouchy old Christian. I was telling someone in the office, I read of a preacher who's having difficulty in his church. He said, we got a young couple has been coming about three months. And he said, you know, they're still learning what it's all about. And sometimes they don't come dressed very nice to church. And, you know, maybe shorts and, you know, maybe a top that's not real good. You know what I mean? And, and he said, we got some older people in the church. They're just all bent out of shape over this. He says, and I don't know what to do. I mean, they're... They're, they're making remarks, and they're, they're, they're just... And I try to tell them, listen, man, they're growing. Just be patient. God's going to do a work in their life. And he said, one of the old ladies even wore pajamas. One of the older couple, ladies in church wore her pajamas to church as a protest. They go, you wear anything you want, you know? And, and I think, man, don't become a grumpy old Christian. D- don't be that way. Serve faithfully. You know, Joseph had 17 years at home. He had 17, Jacob then had 17 years without Joseph in his life. And then he had 17 years with him in Egypt. And he blessed both the sons of Joseph. Hebrews eleven twenty one tells us that. I like what he said in verse 16. Did you see what he said? When he gave him the bless the lads, let my name be named on them. Boy, that's a great statement. Not the name of Egypt, Joseph. My name be named on them. Not the name of the world. I want the name of Israel. They are the people of God. They have the promises of God. I want them to know that. Ephraim is the, was the first one who got the blessing. And his name means doubly fruitful. Doubly fruitful. Joshua would be a descendant from Ephraim. Manasseh is the second one, and his name means cause for forgetfulness. Cause for forgetfulness. 
He had two famous descendants, Gideon and Jephthah. And both of those are in Hebrews 11, by the way. You know what, you know what faithful unto death means? When you're faithful unto death happily, you know what it means? You get to give a blessing to your children and to your grandchildren. You get to pass that blessing to the second and to the third generation. What a joy that has to be. You know, if, if, the, if the Bible says that it's a, it, you know greater joy than your children walk in the truth, I, I, I don't know how much, there, there, there's probably maybe even a greater joy to see your grandchildren walk in the truth. That's a real joy. To see it go to a third generation. Israel rejoiced, Jacob rejoiced that he thought he'd never see Joseph again, and yet he got to see Joseph and Joseph's sons. The faithful man shall abound with blessings. Isn't that good? You know what? All of us can be faithful. That's available for everybody. Be faithful unto death. I want to be faithful in death like that. I'd love to be able to, to bless my children's children and see them carry the name of Christ with them. Four goals for every Christian. Know God personally. Can you talk to me? Know God Personally, serve God lovingly, have God's power mightily, and be faithful unto death happily. Why don't you make some goals for your life? You may have other goals, and that's great. But maybe those four would make it on the list somewhere. Just, just four goals that I think we glean from the life of Jacob. Let's stand together for prayer, shall we? Father, I pray you'll take the truth now this evening. Thank you for Jacob. Thank you, Lord, for your word, what we've been able to glean from its truths here this evening. And Father, I pray that each of us would maybe find a quiet time. We would each will find that place where we meet with you. We'd lay out these goals and say, Lord, give me a passion for this, to know you personally, to serve you lovingly, I mean, look, my areas that I serve, am I doing it because I love Jesus Christ? Do I serve because of love or have your commandments become grievous, burdensome? I pray, God, we'd know your power mightily. Oh, we'd have a passion to be filled with the Spirit of God. Energized by you. Not to do this in our own might and our own strength and help us to be faithful, even unto death, that blessing might pass on to our children and our grandchildren. By your grace, give us these goals in our lives. Help us, please. Dismiss us now with your care, Lord. Make us mindful you go with us from this place. And Lord, I pray others would see Christ in our lives this week. You'd have give us the opportunity to point others to Jesus. And I'll thank you for what you'll do. We pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pray for us tomorrow night. We're going to the prison. Uh, come Friday night, would you? You'll enjoy it. Get a chance to see RU and meet some of the RU family. And uh, it would be great to have a great crowd here Friday night and uh, be here for him. So just uh, if you've got opportunity at all, come join us, okay? We're going to have Sloppy Joes and chips and a nice anniversary cake afterwards and uh, so it'll be uh, you'll get rewarded physically for being here but I think you'll get rewarded spiritually too uh, if you're here Friday night all right let's sing I'm pressing on the upward way higher ground all right I'm pressing on the upward way new heights I'm gaining every day still praying as I'm onward bound Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. God bless you. You are dismissed.